Hello and welcome to the Signal Trader Group. This is our weekend wrap up trading plan for May 1st, 2010. Our website is blog.ascendotraders.com where we focus on effective video technical knowledge trading plans on a daily basis. So what makes up a trading plan? Well, first you got to figure out the trend. What is the direction of the market? How do you, what do you use to determine the trend? Are we going up or down? Then we gotta figure out location. There are you don't just place a trade just to place a trade. You gotta figure out where. You know where support and resistance, where moving averages, where are your pivots, um, and then once we know the direction and good areas of possibly entry and exits, what is gonna be your triggers? Most people use technical indicators, market internals. What do you use as a trigger for your entry and buy signals? And finally, how do you manage the trade? Where's your stop? Notice I put that first because most people don't have one. Where's your stop? Where's your target? And those two together equal your risk to reward ratio. So when we look at the week that was, <coughs> we see that the market did end down for the week. Um, it was sort of an interesting week because we were down and up and down and up off of last Friday's Goldman Sachs news. Um, the market ended lower for the week. It was very volatile, as I just said. All 10 sectors ended uh, negatively this week, led by financials and tech. As we say, financials lead the market. Um, the economic data didn't have that much effect in that you can easily say that because we have positive economic data. We had on Friday, we had um, the first quarter GDP showing the third consecutive growth, but the market was down on Friday. Um, we also had on Tuesday the consumer confidence uh, rising 57.9. Uh, uh, That's the highest it's been since August of 2008. We also had the FOMC decide to keep policy, uh, rates where they were. So. Uh, we had good economic data, but as you can see, the market ended down for the week. We had some overseas news. Uh, the S&P downgraded the sovereign debt of three companies. You guys know Greece is one of those. Portugal was also one of those. So, um, you know, that weighed heavily on the market. And people are finally fed up with this whole Greece news. And, and supposedly, they want it solved this weekend. So, we'll see what happens on Monday. Corporate news, you know, uh, earnings are no longer the big thing moving the market. Uh, it does seem like the dollar and the reaction to this overseas news is a little bit more pressing. Um, and then on Friday, uh, uh, a report came out that uh, Goldman Sachs is being investigated again. So that also pulled Goldman Sachs down and Goldman Sachs is down to 145, I believe. So certainly something to keep in mind. But next week we do have our ADP employment, but more importantly on Friday we have non-farm payroll and unemployment. Uh, supposedly this is the month that we're going to kick over possibly with some s census jobs. So positive numbers, not losing jobs, certainly can move the market on Friday, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, for this upcoming session on Monday, we've got some economic data, probably won't move the market that much. You can see uh, as far as earnings concerned for this week and Monday, uh, if I'm putting up Baker Hughes and Foster Wheeler and see, I'm obviously saying that the big companies are gone, and we have a bunch of splits, which is interesting. As the market is is trucking along up, we're seeing more and more uh, splits. There was a big period of time where there were no splits being announced, and now they're coming back. Uh, with regards to the internals, the main thing that I want you to see is going to be the VIX. When we look at the VIX here. You can see last week we're in the 16s, a little rise um, uh, on uh, Monday, and that was off the Goldman Sachs news, and we got all the way up to 18. But we said if we really want to see something, we need to see it pop up in the 20s, the upper 20s, really. And we see that. We see that the 17, we got for the 20, almost 23, 20s. So now that we're seeing the 20s, that might show that the volume, that there is you know, some concern about the market. Um, we certainly have an uptrend from 13, 16 up to 22. We certainly have an uptrend in the VIX. Something to watch for. Uh, we do have a uh, conflict. Uh, uh, the market internals are showing that the volume did not increase on Friday, uh, but my uh, the charts are going to show that they actually did. So we'll, we'll look more at that. But I think that it's important to look at this uptrend in VIX. Um, and even on Friday, for the first time, and I can't remember when our put to call ratio um, was over one. So that means there were more people buying puts on the option side than they were buying calls. So even on some of these down days, look at this, this down day here, we still didn't get over one. And we go back to that Goldman Sachs day and we still didn't get over one. But on this day 
here, our put call ratio did exceed, so there's more puts than calls. So now that I have the charts up, you'll see that conflict. Uh, the internals were set showing a, a volume decrease uh, for Friday, but clearly we can see on this, on our data coming in for our charting platform, that we had an increase in volume. Uh, still not as much as Friday, but still something to watch for. But the big thing to watch for is two things. We've been talking about support, and we had the support of the 10 moving average this whole way up, and then we said even deeper support of the 20 moving average. Even when we did get some wick breaks of the 10 moving average, nothing got to the 20. Wick breaks of the 10 moving average, nothing got to the 20. Another wick break, nothing got to the 20, and then boom, <laughs> you know, Tuesday, we did actually close above the 20 moving average. Now, as we've been saying, uh, all sell-offs have been bought by buying. So we've got Wednesday, Thursday, bring us right on back up here to the top. And then we have Friday's action. So two things is we have closed again below the uh, 20 moving average. That is important. And then we can see this ledge at 11,000 that we talked about last week. And that's basically where we are right now. That's where we stopped on Tuesday's sell-off. That's where we stopped on Friday's sell-off. So this 11,000 is right now our little battlefield. And then we almost have a double top at the top here. Um, you know, we came, came back up, tested the new high, yet we weren't able to make a new high. So that's really basically a failure, and you can say we're starting a little downtrend. So that is certainly something for us to watch. Doesn't mean that we're going to sell off tremendously or whatever, but what I will be doing is put on an alert below this 11,000 range, maybe get down here to the wicks, which are around 950, 960, put an alert there. If we break there, certainly the 50 moving average will be our target. Let's switch over to the NASDAQ. And we're going to see the same thing. We're going to see the push up. We're going to see this week push down. We tried again to reach the highs, and we weren't able to. And we got a clear closing below the 20 moving average on Friday. Um, sort of a ledge again. Uh, forming here at this 2450 range, kind of matching up with some of the wicks. So that's somewhere where I would be putting my alert, breaking a 2450, and certainly seems that we will be going down and testing the 50 moving average if we can confirm the uh, the move lower with another close. But again, all sell-offs has been followed by buying. So if we get some good news out of Greece, then maybe we'll see some buying on uh, Monday. But let's switch to the S&P 500. And we complete the trio of seeing the same thing. Now, the thing about the S&P 500 is we almost see a, a, a deeper push below the 20 moving average. And we're even closer to the uh, 50 moving average. But that 50 moving average in this deeper push matches us up with the ledge of 11.75. That's our ledge. So for the, for the uh, S&P 500, 11.75 is your alert. Certainly want to play the move down if we're going to come test the 50 moving average. But if we break this 11.75 range, you know, we're heading even lower, possibly down at least to 11.50. Sticking with the S&P 500 and coming over to a monthly chart, we can still see we need to stay above this 50 moving average, which would put us at about 11.50. We do see some support in there, so that's great. So if we do break that 11.75 range, that's probably where we're going to go. Um, uh, but again, we want to keep that psychological boost of staying above the 50 moving average. Switching to the NASDAQ, we can see what a lovely chart we have here. Almost taking out the whole move, but we are at a resistance level. This 25.40 range, 25.30 range is our resistance. That is where we came up. And we're pulling back a little bit. So if we're going to go back down, possibly all the way back down to 2350, it's certainly a possibility for the NASDAQ. Finally, the Dow Jones on the monthly chart. With the Dow Jones on the monthly chart, we're sort of, the wick came up and touched, almost air touched the little resistance area. But what, what I'm really concerned about is where we are right now. I mean, this is another resistance level. And so, um, I like to see this kind of pause here, but if we were to break lower, again, we want to stay above the psychological boost of the 50 moving average. The good news as we look at sectors is our Dow Jones transport is considered a leading indicator, and even a month of April still was a nice bullish candle. Add a little resistance so we may pause. Take a little metal. The uh, April candle is a bearish candle. 
at resistance, possible pausing there. Gold looks good, a nice strong April candle at, at the highs of uh, 08. Certain looks uh, like it might pause here. Banking, showing some trouble at the resistance of the 50 moving average. Real estate looks great, nice candle heading up to the uh, 50 moving average here. Uh, aerospace was Boeing showing resistance at the downturn line. Resorts and casinos closing right above the 50 moving average. Certain looks strong. Shipping and railroad uh, definitely still look strong. And internet, we got a nice doji at the highs. We are out of time for our YouTube viewers. If you want to see the whole video, make sure you subscribe to our podcast. Follow us on Twitter. And we would love a donation so that we can keep providing you with these great free technical analysis videos.